Holy One, we gather together in your presence with expectation, hungry for an encounter with you, eager to hear your word. Open our eyes and ears to the presence of your Holy Spirit. May the seeds of your word scatter among us this morning and fall on fertile soil. May they take root in our hearts and lives and produce an abundant harvest of good words and deeds. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, our teacher and our Lord. Amen. Our opening hymn this morning is hymn 218 from Voices United. We praise you, O God. join with me in a call to worship for the season of Pentecost. We have gathered to worship God. We have come seeking comfort, inspiration, community, and insight. We have come to open ourselves to the power of God's presence in our midst. We have come to offer up the seasons and the turnings in our lives and to ask God's help in our learning and in our growing. God has given us this beautiful earth, all that grows, all that lives upon it. God has gathered us into a community of care and worship. Let us worship God with love, thanksgiving, and praise. Good morning, I welcome you to this summer service of worship. I would like to tell you that Reverend Cam Fraser is away for a few weeks and so I will be substituting in his absence. My name is Charlene McGowan, I'm a member of this congregation. This morning we would like to thank Teva Burton for her gifts of music and Victor Lam will be reading our scriptures. I invite you now to follow along as we join in our prayer of centering and confession. Please join with me. Almighty God, we remember with gratitude those people who generously sowed the seeds of faith in our lives. Above all, we recognize how you have blessed our lives with the gift of the Holy Spirit 
so that our faith has miraculously grown. We confess the times we fail to involve ourselves in planting any seeds of faith in the lives of others. Too often, our personal agendas have become more important than yours. At times, our lives become so entangled with the values of the world that we forget what you have said and done and promised. Bless and renew our lives, we pray, so that we remain connected to you at all times and in all places, strengthening our faith to expand and growing strongly and vigorously to bear the fruit of your mercy, your love, your undying life. Amen. O oh God of seed and soil, God of hope and God of promise, fill us once again with the light and flame of Pentecost. Amen. Prayer for understanding. God, Holy Spirit, come to us, come among us. 
Come as the wind and cleanse. Come as a fire and burn. Come as a dew and refresh. Convict, convert, and consecrate our hearts and lives to our great good and your great glory. Amen. A reading from the Hebrew Scripture, Isaiah chapter 55, verses 10 to 13. As the rain and the snow come down from heaven, and do not return it without watering the earth, and making it bud and flourish, so that it yields seed for the sower and bread for the eater. So is my word that goes out from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. You will go out in joy and be led forth in peace. The mountains and hills will burst into song before you, and all the trees of the field will clap their hands. And instead of thorn bush, will grow the jennifer, and instead of briar, the myrtle will grow. This will be for the Lord's renown, for an everlasting sign that will endure forever. Our responsive reading is from Psalm 119, part one, on page 838, Voices United. We will read responsibly with everyone joining in parts written for all and singing the refrain. those who live a blameless life, who follow your law, O God. Happy are those who keep your decrees, who seek you with a whole heart. They also do no wrong, but walk in your ways. You have given your precepts for us to keep diligently. Testament, Matthew chapter 13, verses 1 to 9, 18 to 23, the parable of the sower. The same day Jesus went out of the house and sat by the lake, such large crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat in it, while all the people stood on the shore. Then he told the many things in parables, saying, A farmer went, to, went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched and they withered because they had no root. Other seed fell among thorns, which grew up and choked the plants. 
Still other seed fell on good soils where it produced a crop a hundred, sixty, or thirty times that was sown. Whoever has ears, let them hear. Listen then to what the parable of the sower means. When anyone hears the message about the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what was sown in their heart. This is the seed sown among, along the path. The seed falling on rocky ground refers to someone who hears the word and at once receives it with joy. But since they have no root, they last it only a short time. When trouble or persecution comes because of the word, they greatly fall away. The seed falling among the thorns refers to someone who hears the word, but the worries of life and this deceitfulness of wealth choke the word, making it unfruitful. But the seed falling on good soil refers to someone who hears the word and understands it. This is the one who produces a crop yielding a hundred, sixty, or thirty times what was sown. May God's blessing be placed upon this and all words spoken and pondered today. Amen. It's a curious thing, but despite being raised in Saskatchewan, I know precious little about farming. I'm a city girl. I often ask my husband, who is originally from Brooklyn, New York, where little communities I hear about in the news are located, and he seems to know. When we travel on the highway, I can guess what wheat looks like, but I have no idea what the other crops are. Yet, I'm acutely aware of the importance of agriculture in our province and our economy, and I believe I understand the concept and significance of a bumper crop. Seeds and planting and harvesting are important entities to our lives in Saskatchewan, whether we live in the urban or rural setting. Seeds are often used as metaphors in many parts of our lives, including literature. In Shakespeare's Macbeth, the character Banquo asks the fortune tellers, if you can look into the seeds of time 
and say which grain will grow and which will not. In other words, he is saying, if you know the future, just tell me now. Of course, even though the fortune tellers predict a rosy picture for Macbeth, the story takes unusual twists and turns, making the drama likely written in the year 1606, both tragic and intriguing. But as I think of our gospel for today, I think mostly of Max Braithwaite's novel, Why Shoot the Teacher, which is set in rural Saskatchewan in the 1930s. The protagonist is a lone male teacher who travels from the big city, Saskatoon, to his first teaching job in the middle of nowhere in a one-room schoolhouse. Throughout the seasons of fall, winter, spring, and summer, he speaks about a terrible weed that obstructs the crops, which he calls Russian thistle, like this thistle that strangles the crop beside it. I imagine that most people who garden find weeds annoying. They overtake the good plants, they seal the sun, soil, and moisture. The thorns grew up and choked the good seeds, our gospel says. Because I have read Why Shoot the Teacher, I can picture how the terrible weeds suffocate the good crops here on the prairies. Perhaps many of you, however, have actually lived this and have seen it firsthand. In considering our gospel lesson for today, it may be good to remind ourselves that the gospel accounts repent decades after the events actually occurred. Biblical scholars assume the Gospel of Matthew may have been written between the years AD 80 and 90. The Gospel of Matthew draws heavily on the Gospel of Mark. The parable of the seed and the sower, also in the Gospel of Mark chapter 4, is likewise told in the Gospel of Luke chapter 8. The fact that this parable is represented by three, these three accounts known as the Synoptic Gospels tells us that it was a long remembered parable after Jesus told it. Mark and Matthew state that Jesus used a boat to speak to a large crowd on the shore when he told this parable. While Luke does not mention the boat, Luke does represent the parable as being told to a large crowd. While many people heard the story firsthand, Jesus explained it fully only to the disciples. Imagine you are one of the individuals included in the large crowd hearing this parable for the first time. Would you think the parable is about the seed, the sower, or the soil? Where in the story do we find ourselves? Are the sowers who sprinkle the seeds discriminately on the paths under our feet? Are we those? Perhaps we're the seeds which have potential to germinate in the ground all around us. Maybe we may even be the soil which shows a readiness to receive new growth. It's difficult to know really because everything mentioned in the parable refers to something else. But Jesus provides an explanation that falls into four categories. The first seed which falls along the path and is pecked by at birds represents people who hear the word of God but don't let it take root. The seed that falls on stones represents people who are joyful at hearing the word of God but lack the foundation or motivation to let that seed sink in deeply. The third may represent a crowded heart, whereby some people receive the word, but other preoccupations, the thorns in the parable, choke it out of the way. The fourth represents an open and ready heart, whereby seeds are planted, take root deeply, and produce a good harvest. I suspect it is easy for us to relate to the seeds and weeds part of the story most. 
We want God's word to be planted and grow within us. But there are so many other concerns, especially today. We have the greater concern of the pandemic and how it has changed our private and public worlds. There are loved ones we cannot visit, places we cannot go, and life events which have been put on hold. Some people have had postponed medical treatment and some are waiting for medical answers. We are concerned for family, friends, and maybe even ourselves. Fear, pain, grief, and loneliness abound. Then there are the concerns for the greater issues of equity and justice, for which we feel we should be a force of good, but just how about do we go about doing that? How do we go about being part of the good crop that Jesus speaks about amidst a crisis? In my work as a mental health therapist, I have come to understand that for many people, their greatest growth may occur during time of crisis. Crisis sometimes offers us the best opportunity to do something different in order to get different results. Crisis is when we may be most vulnerable and therefore most ready to do the necessary work to make real and lasting change. No matter which private crisis we find ourselves in, perhaps we may use it to draw closer to God and set ourselves on a path of true personal purpose. We'll still have to weed the garden occasionally, but the potential for growth is evident and real. In the book, Why Shoot the Teacher, author Max Braithwaite describes the weeds known as Russell Thistle as a plague, only to be accompanied by the plague of grasshoppers, both born from the hot dust of the Saskatchewan prairie. Through a harsh winter and burning summer, the protagonist in the story has the wonderful opportunity to meet his daily crises with humor and compassion for others. He grows as a teacher and as a man. May we also understand our potential for growth amidst the backdrop of our own crises. All we need to do is to hold on to the seeds of the Word of God and allow them to be planted fully in our hearts. Amen. As we are able, may we respond with the words of a new creed which are printed. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the Word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to live with respect in creation, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope. In life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God.
I invite you to join with me now in offering prayers for our community. Let us first start with a moment of silence for our own prayers for ourselves, the people we love, the community, and indeed the whole world. Heavenly Father, we know that when we become disconnected from you, our lives become parched and unfruitful, and our faith becomes stunted and dry. O oh God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Allow us to be agents of your peace and give us strength to disrupt inequities and injustices that still suffocate so many in our global community even today. Help us, we pray, to be a source of courage for those who are in isolation, fear, and pain, which has been magnified by the pandemic. O oh God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless and renew our lives, we pray, so that we remain connected to you at all times and in all places, strengthening our faith to expand and growing strongly and vigorously to bear the fruit of your mercy, your love, your undying life. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, we pray. Invite you as well now to continue with the prayer of Jesus, our Lord's Prayer. As a child turns to her mother, so we turn to God and say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Our closing hymn is hymn 417 from Voices United, God, as we rise to leave.
bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Thank you.